This is the third video in our five-part series on ethical, moral and cultural opportunities and risks of digital technology. In this video, we take a look at censorship and the internet and using computer technology to monitor behaviour. So internet censorship refers to the deliberate suppression of materials in terms of what can be published or accessed. It comes in many forms and is a subject of great debate. Many schools and businesses use filtering software to censor or restrict access to content they feel is inappropriate for students or employees to be accessing during the school or working day. Now, as part of its duty of care, a school has a moral and more importantly, a legal obligation to safeguard its students by blocking access to inappropriate material. However, some schools block access to far less controversial sites. Popular sites often blocked by schools and businesses include social media platforms and video streaming services like YouTube. These sites are not necessarily inappropriate, but schools and business often consider them to be distractions. Many schools block access to YouTube because they deem it to be educationally distracting. However, doing so prevents students and teachers from taking advantage of a wealth of educational resources. For example, these flipped classroom videos. Now, this kind of censorship is not really an area of great debate. We choose our school or job, and in doing so, we agree to their policies. However, the debate of censorship is much fiercer when we look at it on a national and international level. Governments often require internet service providers to block access to certain websites. In the UK, for example, the government requires ISPs to block sites relating to extremist politics, extreme pornography and copyright infringement and file sharing. Now, most people would argue that this kind of government intervention is morally sensible and balanced. However, not all countries are the same, and the issue of censorship is hotly debated. Where should the line be drawn between protecting the public and infringing on their freedoms of speech and human rights? Tim Berners-Lee, creator of the World Wide Web, is leading a group of campaigners for free neutral internet access to be written into the United Nations Charter as a basic human right. If you're watching this video in the United Kingdom, you might be interested that as of 2020, we are 35th down on the list on the World Press Freedom of Expression Index. At the extreme end, some governments, like that of North Korea, control internet access so tightly that their citizens are barely aware of the outside world. Typically, this action is taken to ensure the public in these countries cannot access any material that might contradict the social message of the ruling administration. So let's now look at using computer technologies to monitor behaviour. Advances in computing technology have led to a range of devices and methods that can be used to track and monitor our behaviour. These technologies fall into three broad categories, those deliberately chosen by the user, passive monitoring and forced monitoring and tracking. So the least controversial of the three categories is computer technology deliberately chosen by us, the user, to monitor aspects of our behaviour. For example, the ever growing range of wearable devices like smartwatches and fitness trackers. People are often happy for aspects of their behaviour to be monitored by such devices in exchange for perceived lifestyle improvements. The next category covers devices that are more passive in their monitoring, such as CCTV cameras and speed cameras. We're all used to seeing CCTV cameras around cities, venues and train stations. There's an estimated four to six million of them in the UK alone. Most people agree the added security provided by CCTV is worth it, especially if it reduces crime. Others argue it's gone too far. Where does surveillance designed to protect turn into invasion of privacy? The third category tends to be the most controversial. 
technology related devices that forcibly monitor our behavior. This category can include GPS tagging criminals to track their movements and internal monitoring systems that log employees' online activities. The acceptable use of technology to monitor an employee's work habits is a grey area. Most people, again, would agree that employees have the right to monitor staff productivity. After all, employees are being paid to do a job. A policy that prevents employees using social media during work hours is also considered reasonable. On the other hand, should employees be able to monitor what staff post on their social media during breaks or read personal emails sent via company systems? Or is that a step too far? Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by censorship on the internet and to what degree do various countries censor content? And how can computer technology be used to monitor behavior? So before you end this video, just pop your pen down and check out this little. So keeping up with technological developments is something which